plain cotton t-shirt, active wear, cycling jersey, Hawaiian, linen short sleeve, golf shirt, terry cloth polo, short sleeve cotton button up, short sleeve seersucker, cowboy, fly fishing, long sleeve dress shirt, shirt, tie. Whew, it is hot out here today. It's over 30 degrees Celsius, close to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And we have had a lot of days like this this summer. It has been a hot, dry summer, made worse it seems by wildfire smoke. So I spent the last little while compiling a whole bunch of different types of clothing, different cuts, different materials, different styles, all with the goal of finding out what is the best way to just live your life on a bike in a hot summer day. I'm all about dressing for your destination, not the journey. So this isn't about cycling specific clothing. It's about regular clothes. This is the stuff you wanna wear every day. Here are the 13 different types I'm going to try. I'll get into each one of them, but I'll be measuring them against these factors, comfort, the sweat factor, uh, the sun protection, uh, work readiness. So this really is about uh, arriving to your destination in a suitable manner. And as for the bottom half of me is I'm gonna stick with one pair of pants today for a couple of reasons. One is like, I need a bit of control in this, uh, in this experiment. I mean, clearly if you wear shorts, it's gonna be cooler than if you wear pants. But if you're commuting, there's not a whole lot of workplaces out there that you can wear shorts too. So I chose to wear pants today, keep it simple. And also because I love these pants. These pants are from Dewar and they actually sent me a pair of these pants to try out. Um, this is the only part of the, today's video that I didn't pay for myself, but I gotta say, I have great things to say about Dewar because I wear them all the time. Uh, I really actually love them because they're super comfortable. They look good. You can wear them to the office or out at the end of the day, but also on a bike, they're super stretchy and comfortable and whew, they just, feel good and I really love the doers. So we got that out of the way, let's go. Okay, so I've changed into my first item of fashion. I think I'll be doing a lot of changing out in public today. So it's a good thing I have a clipboard because if somebody asks questions why I'm changing in public, I'll just say, don't worry, I have a clipboard, everything's fine. Anyway, the first one up for today's judgment is a plain cotton t-shirt. Let's see how it does. The plain cotton t-shirt, for comfort, I'm gonna score it pretty high because they're comfortable. And also, if it's big enough, as I started riding, a little breeze started getting through. The cotton wicks the sweat off your body, so it feels pretty good. So I'm gonna give the comfort, I'm gonna say, probably pretty good, I'll give it about a, I'm gonna give it a nine, actually. Sweat factor, cotton is both good and bad because it does lift the sweat off of your body. It does feel pretty good, but it can get pretty uh, wet with sweat and when you arrive at your destination, Ooh, cotton, not the best. I'm going to give it a six. Sun protection, uh, out of all the shirts today, this is probably the worst sun protection. My arms are exposed, my neck is exposed. Uh, pretty bad, so I'm gonna give it a uh, three. Work readiness, I don't think a t-shirt is appropriate work attire in most places. I'm sure there are a few out there. Uh, and besides, if you get all sweaty in it, you're gonna stink all day, so I'm gonna give it also a three as well. 21 for the t-shirt. Okay, next item on the list is active wear. And by that, I mean sort of the Under Armour style athletic wear that you wear to do general activities. This I think is technically a running shirt, 100% polyester, um, use it for exercise. Let's see how it does. Well, I officially got my first dirty look for changing my shirt in public back there. Anyway, that was active wear and um, it made me wonder why activewear exists. I mean, it's polyester, so the fabric is not water soluble, so the, it doesn't absorb the sweat from your body, it just leaves it on your body. So I'm sweaty and slimy like crazy right now. Um, why is that good for activewear? I don't understand. Anyway, let's get to the ratings. Uh, for comfort, it's like a t-shirt, but I'd say this one was cut a little bit differently. It's uh, specifically for running, I guess, so it just hung on my body a little bit differently. So I'm gonna give that a, we'll give that a seven. The sweat factor is terrible. I'm sweating like crazy, so I'm giving that a three. Sun protection, just like the t-shirt, it's one of the worst. Like, I've got a lot of skin exposed, so that's also a three and work readiness, it's even worse than the t-shirt. I'm giving that a two. Plain cotton tee, 21. Activewear, even worse, 15. I agree, N not a great option for urban cycling. Okay, next up is what you could probably call the cousin to the activewear, and that is a cycling jersey. I guess it would be the cousin who likes bikes. Polyester, 
cut in a different way. It's got a bit more flexibility in the zipper so you can unzip if you get a bit hot. Pockets in the back, of course, for your food and your water bottle on your long ride. Let's go try it out. Today is not necessarily about fashion. I mean, I'm not judging these things based on how good I look in them. But what's the deal with activewear and cycling jerseys? I mean, they're so tight. It's a, unless you're like a world-class athlete, it's impossible to feel good in them, don't you think? Weird. Uh, pretty comfortable still. I mean, it's cut for the bike, so when you lean over, it bends in the right places and that sort of thing. So I'll give it the same as the activewear, a seven. Sweat factor, it's total polyester, so I'm still sweating like crazy. I'm giving it a three. Sun protection, it's, I'm gonna say it's slightly better than the activewear because it does have a bit of a collar on my neck, although not much, so I'll give it a four instead of a three. Uh, work readiness, uh, this is even worse than activewear. If you show up in an Under Armour shirt at work, they'll look at you funny. If you show up in a cycling jersey, they'll look at you funny and call you names, so I'm giving that a one. 15, actually came out the same as activewear. Cycling jersey, 15. Aloha, okay, next up is the venerable Hawaiian shirt. I've never owned a Hawaiian shirt. I bought this one this morning for this purpose and it was not refundable. So we'll see what happens with it. Hawaiian shirts are interesting because they're a bit looser cut and they're usually cotton or rayon, I understand, or silk. This is some sort of high-tech uh, plant-based fabric called viscose or something like that. It sounds made up, but anyway, it's similar. It's a nice light fabric. Uh, I think it'll breathe a little bit better than polyester, but it still has that sort of same feel for it. So. I have no idea. Let's check it out. Okay, I found some shade. Ooh, that's much better. Uh, when you're doing this kind of thing, wear a hat. Well, I was skeptical to be honest, but I kind of fell in love with this shirt. Which makes sense. Why am I surprised? People in Hawaii know how to dress for the hot weather. Ugh. Comfort. It feels great. Uh, I'm giving it uh, an eight. It's not as clingy and sticky as those uh, athletic shirts, so that's pretty great. Sweat factor is really good, actually, because it's a bit loose and baggy. As soon as I started riding, the wind kind of came in and blew it around and cooled me right down. It felt really great. I'm gonna give it a, I'm giving it an eight. Okay, sun protection. It's got a bit more material. It covers up a bit more skin. There's a collar, the sleeve's a little bit longer. Still not great because I've got bare arms, so I'll give it a six. Work readiness. Well, I don't know, if you work in IT, you're probably fine. But everywhere else, I'd say it's by far the most acceptable one here, but maybe not the ideal choice, so I'll give it a seven. There we go. For the Hawaiian shirt, it is a 29. The leader so far. Next, we have a linen shirt. Now, linen feels made for hot weather. I mean, really, it's a light fabric, hangs really loose and nice. I know what you're probably thinking, like I just rolled out of bed, but no, 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 I actually ironed this this morning, but I did kind of roll it up into my bag to get here. That's why it's so wrinkled, but it's linen. That's what happens. Let's take it for a bike ride. Okay, that is the linen short sleeve shirt. And again, I quite like this one too. Compared to the last shirt, this one is, Similarly, sort of baggy and breezy, so that feels quite good. It's different in that it's um, much more absorbent, so I can feel the sweat being lifted off my body. But at the same time, it's also getting dragged down in sweat a bit. It's getting a bit soggy, and I assume it's probably not gonna smell that great at the end. Comfort, uh, it's pretty comfortable, it's light. Probably not as comfortable as that last one, so I'm gonna give it a seven. The sweat factor feels pretty good. I'll give it a six. Sun protection, basically the same as the last shirt. So that's a six. And then work readiness. This feels pretty good. I think most uh, workplaces, I mean, it's too bad you can't wear lighter clothes in some workplaces in the summer. It's good for all kinds of reasons, including our comfort. But this one's pretty good. So I'll give it the same as the Hawaiian shirt, probably about a seven. Total is 26 compared to the 29 for the Hawaiian shirt. You see that? I saved the tag from this shirt because it says, keeps you cool. Next up on the list is a golf shirt. This is the classic uh, golf shirt with a collar, a couple of buttons. It's polyester blend again, um, designed to, I guess, swing the golf club. So let's see how it does on a bike. There is the 
golf shirt. Great for golfing, but how is it for cycling? Wow. For comfort, um, it's not bad. I mean, it's not as comfortable as like a t-shirt, but it is made of nice soft material. I'll give it an eight. Uh, the sweat factor, again, polyester, the sweat staying on my body, which I don't love. Um, I'll give it uh, maybe a six. When it comes to sun protection, it's a little bit less sun protection than the uh, bigger, bulkier shirts. There's just more material to them. So I'll give this maybe a five. Uh, work readiness. I mean, it, golf shirts kind of became the casual Friday mainstay for a certain generation of dude, didn't it? So pretty good. I'll give it a seven. I'd say it's on par with the last two. So that is a 26. I need to get a new Sharpie. All right, we're staying in the same stylistic genre. What's the word you say in fashion? In the similar style, we have now a polo shirt, very similar to a golf shirt, but this is terry cloth. So the material is quite a bit different than that polyester uh, golf shirt, even if it does have the same kind of cut. Okay, the terry cloth polo. And it made me realize why terry cloth is usually made to make towels and not t-shirts. Comfort. I mean, it's nice and soft, so that's good. But on the downside is it, once it started to get wet from my own sweat, it just started to hang heavy and I didn't love it. I'm gonna give it a six sweat factor. Give it a six there as well. Sun protection, it's basically the same as a golf shirt. So we'll stick with the five and the work readiness. I'd say it looks a little more professional in an office environment than a golf shirt. So I'll give it an eight, 25 points. Now we have what you could probably call sort of basic middle-class white dude shirt, uh, a short sleeve dress shirt, I guess you could say. This one's, this one is pretty thin cotton. Everyone's got one of these, right? Okay, let's try it out on a bike. And it's actually pretty good. It's a little bit baggy, so I did get a breeze going through there. So it actually cooled me down a bit from the last one I wore. It's quite good. I mean, not only can you wear it to Crush, crush buds at the barbecue with the bros, but you can also wear it on a bike ride. I think it's pretty good. Comfort wise, I'm gonna give it a seven. The sweat factor is probably a little bit better than that last uh, polo I wore, but I'll give it a seven. Sun protection, I'll bump it up a bit of a, to a six. It's got a bit more material. It's also got the collar on here. Work readiness, again, it's about an eight probably. I think most workplaces would find this acceptable. 28. Getting up there, it's just one behind the Hawaiian shirt. So whew, watch out Hawaii Five-0, someone's coming for you. I'm actually looking forward to this shirt. This is a seersucker uh, short sleeve button up. And I got this idea from the book Just Ride by Grant Peterson, maybe my favorite book about cycling. And he recommended seersucker as a good material for riding on hot days. Seersucker, you mostly see it on you know, politicians from Alabama in the 1930s, but it's cotton, but it's um, just put together in a different way that gives it a bit of loft. So I think a, I think the idea is that a bit more draft can get through. It just lifts things off your skin a bit more. So it's not weighing down on you so much. And it's the first time I've worn it. So I'm weirdly excited about it. Let's see how it goes. So that is Seersucker, who knew? First time I've worn Seersucker, and I guess those suit makers in Alabama in the 30s were correct. It's pretty interesting how it works. I mean, it's a lot thicker cotton than the other cotton options I've ridden, I've used so far, but the air was really circulating. It just seemed to like a little bit cooler. So, hmm, interesting. Okay, comfort, I'm gonna give it a little bit less than the nice thin cotton one, so I'll give that a six. Sweat factor is pretty good. I think it's slightly better than the short sleeve, so I'll give that an eight. Uh, sun protection, so I'll give that a six. And then work readiness, uh, pretty good. I'd say it's comparable to the other short sleeves ones. I'll give that an eight. 28, so a really good option there as well. Yeehaw, here's the next shirt. This is a cowboy shirt. And my thinking here is that maybe when trying to stay cool in the sun, you should think about those people who spend all day in the sun, which I would say would be a rancher. And I just happen to have a cowboy shirt because I live in Calgary and we have a 
huge Western stampede every called the Calgary Stampede, huge Western fair every year. So it, we, it's like a civic obligation to own a cowboy shirt. So here we go. Here's my cowboy shirt. Also made of cotton, not all are cotton, but this one is. It's got snaps, it's got a cut, it's got long sleeves. My first long sleeve shirt today and a nice collar. I do not have my cowboy hat, although again, might be a good option. Well, I learned something today. I learned that cowboys know what they're doing. This shirt on the bike was actually pretty good. I mean, the best thing about it, and I don't know why I didn't think of this before, was that I'm just completely covered from the sun. I think that's a great thing. I mean, long sleeves, great. Collar, great. But also this shirt is cut in a good way for the bike. Maybe it's because it's like the same position as on a horse. I don't know. Okay, comfort cut pretty well. I'm gonna give it uh, one up on the last one. So that's a seven. The sweat factor is pretty good. I'm gonna give that a, I'm gonna give that an eight. Oh wait, I'll give sun protection. I'm gonna give an eight because it's quite good. Sweat factor, I'll give maybe a seven. And then work readiness, well, I guess that depends on your workplace. I'd say for most of you, unless you're uh, working at, I don't know, a farmer's union or something, I'll give it a, maybe a six. Now we'll give it a seven. 29 for the cowboy shirt, impressive. So this is technically a fly fishing shirt and you might be wondering why I'm wearing that. And credit goes to the great YouTube channel, Path Less Pedaled, love it. And this was the suggestion I picked up there of a fly fishing shirt as a cycling shirt. And I confess I've actually used this on a bike a few times before, but I wanted to compare it to the other shirts on a level playing field. So let's give it a go. Okay, fly fishing shirt. I have a lot to say about this shirt, so bear with me. First of all, it's great for cycling. It's long sleeve with a collar, so it keeps the sun off. It's a really light material. It's got vents in the back, so air circulation is really good. It's light, it's wicking. It's really good. So, pathless pedal, correct again, great option. Downside I found is that there's not a lot of variety in the colors and it sort of looks like you're going fly fishing. Okay, so for comfort, it's such a nice light material. I'm giving it a good score. I'll give it an eight. Sweat factor, it really, it might be the best one so far. The sweat is really lifting off my body and because it's so light and air circulating, I'm sweating less than almost anything else so far. So I'm gonna give that also an eight. Sun protection, it's got an SPF score. I think it's SPF 50, so it might be the best one I've seen so far. Not only is it like cover all of my skin up, it does have a great SPF. Also, it's got little loops so you can roll your sleeves up, which is kind of a nice thing too. And I'm gonna give that a nine for sun protection. And work readiness, it's pretty good. It's sort of like got the same problem as the cowboy shirt and that it might depend on your workplace. So I'll give that one a seven. We've got a 32, we have a new winner, the fly fishing shirt, who knew? Okay, next up we're getting into complete workwear, I would say. Yes, this is a different shirt. It may have the same pattern. Apparently I've got a taste, whatever. This is a straight up cotton dress shirt. This is the kind of thing that you could wear to most workplaces, no problem. And I guess the question here is, can you actually ride on a hot day in that workwear and not worry about it? That's why we're here. nice cotton shirt. Dress shirts are not the most comfortable, of course. It wouldn't, if, it, if it was too comfortable, it wouldn't be workwear. So I'll give it maybe a seven. The sweat factor, definitely more sweaty than the fly fishing shirt, but uh, not terrible. I'm gonna give it around maybe a six. Sun protection is actually quite good. I'm giving that one a nine as well. And work readiness, I mean, it doesn't get more work ready than this. Well, it does on the next one actually, but pretty close. So I'll give that one a nine as well. 31. So just one point less than the fly fishing shirt. Interesting. As I look, I don't have a mirror. Next up is the final test and that is the classic shirt and tie. Maybe you're required to wear a tie to work. Maybe you are a TV private detective and all you wear is a shirt and a tie. Maybe you also have a jacket or a blazer on top of this. 
you probably want to take your jacket and blazer off when you're riding to work and put it on when you get there. But I do think this is a valid test. Let's check it out. Comfort, definitely less comfortable when it's tight around your neck. So I'm gonna give that a six. The sweat factor, quite similar to a long sleeve dress shirt, of course, but um, a little more buttoned up. So I did find myself sweating a little bit more. So instead of a six, I'll give that a five. Sun protection, great. Maybe the best one yet because it's buttoned right up on my neck and my arms. I'll give it a 10, I guess. And then work readiness is at the top. We'll give that a 10. 31. Wow, interesting. Okay, let's go take a look at these results. Well, before I dive into the scores, I wanna just talk about a couple of things I learned. If we're trying to protect ourselves from the heat and the sun, we should probably ask those people who do this kind of thing all the time. Cowboys, uh, fly fishermen, they know what they're doing. So let's not do all this research when they've already figured it out. Cover up when you're trying to protect yourselves from the sun, put on clothes but also make them loose fitting if you can so you get a bit of air circulating through them. Button up shirts a little bit cooler than shirts that you pull over. If you can untuck, great. Okay, let's get into the scores. Now, according to my score here, the best shirt is the fly fishing shirt. And yeah, I, I think that's probably the way to go. If you can get away with a fly fishing shirt on a hot day, go for it. Definitely on a hot day if you're going just for a bike ride, like a pleasure ride, ditch the Lycra and all of that. Go for that shirt, you'll feel much better. And if you can get away with it in the office, go ahead. Also, the dress shirt and the tie came up higher than I expected, which is interesting, but also it made me think that maybe, maybe we or maybe me is just putting too much thought into this, you know? The old mantra that I have of dress for your destination and not the journey, maybe we should just do that. I mean, keeping yourself out of the sun is important, but maybe what's more important is just getting to our destination, uh, do a little cleanup when you get there. Check out my video from a few weeks ago for some tips on riding in hot weather and maybe not stress too much about what you're wearing. Just be sensible, uh, cover up, make sure they're loose fitting and you'll probably be okay. I don't know why it took me all this to figure that out, but it seems like a bit of a no brainer in hindsight. Anyway, I hope you learned something from that. I sure did. I'm gonna maybe stop stressing about what I wear so much. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Oh,